What? Hello? Oh. You froze, what? man. That was weird. You fr oh, here we go. This is going to be a shit episode, guys. Because <laughs> <laughs> Cause we're on late. It's midnight, you Internet, Internet's going to kick us off. Oh, I'm up to no. six, six megabytes. Oh, God. Yeah, I'm going to double check this to make sure how mine is. Yeah, but yours is fine. We know it's mine. Mine is <laughs> crap. Folks, do not go with Sky for internet is crap. Terry needs donations. I think that's. <laughs> I need donations. I fund me to buy me some decent internet. Yeah, no, I'm all good. I just checked. Yeah. Right. I've got a question. I've got a question for you. Okay. What the fuck is going on? Who is this fucking Luis Carvalido? <laughs> has jumped up now as a tenth dad. I knew you were going <laughs> to <laughs> Who the fuck is he? And what rock did he crawl out from under? So, I, I so I never knew this person. Never, nothing until never come, a, never come across him before. Never till I saw a video on Mc uh, McDojo Life, which who I love. I love the channel. Love those guys. I've chatted with them many times. Um, actually, it's generally just one guy who runs it, but behind the scenes, folks. Anyway, um, yeah. So I, what caught my attention first of all was I saw the Kyokushin kanji. Well, the, the video that they played was a typical McDojo video. Yeah. Absolutely shocking. Do, do you want to share it now? Yeah, I'm going to. But, the, uh, but before, <laughs> I thought it was a joke. I was like, because I, there's I no way a Kyokushin person's going to do this. No. When people watch this video, you'll be like, and everyone thought, even that people I know are coming and saying, this is a joke. It's a spoof. <laughs> it's a joke. These are Kyokushin guys. This is a joke. All right, so I'm gonna try playing. If it doesn't work, I'll edit it in after to make sure people do no see joke, it. No joke, though. No, no joke. No joke. Uh, let's see the best way. Let's share the sound. I don't know if there is any on here. <laughs> it's, here we go. See, and he says, "I wish this was a." I never saw that. I wish this was a parody, but it unfortunately, is not. <laughs> oh, all right. One more time. For people listening, the guy has a gun on him, takes a tanto, wooden tanto, blade knife, puts it into the trigger hole, awkwardly and twists around as his hand. Uh, anyway, that was the first. When I first seen that, I thought, that's not real. That's and not me real. too. That's a, that's a spoof. It's made up. It's made me up. too. I thought he was messing sent, around. Sent me on the warpath then, and I was um, I kept kept messaging McDojo Life and tagging him, saying, where's this video from? Where's the source? This is a made up video. You've made this video up. You've bought some Kyokushin geese. You've made the video <laughs> just to get views. Because this is, Kyokushin is not in McDojo. By the way, McDojo Life never does that. They would never do that. No, 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 no. But, but I was thinking, you I must, know have, you're you must yeah. have done that. Yeah. You must have done that. You're shocked. This is, this is Kyokushin. Yeah. Um, so uh, the guy who runs it, we were chatting, he, he sent me the link and I looked at it and I was like, I was still a bit dubious thinking, no, oh, this, this can't be real. It's got to be a joke. They've got to be playing about it. And then I started looking through all of this guy, uh, Luis Carvalido. Where is he from? Venezuela? Somewhere. It's, it's somewhere like somewhere like Venezuela. Um, looking through his stuff, and I'm like, oh my god, this is this is he's a hundred percent serious. <laughs> this guy is real. He's a hundred percent real. Last year, he was a Sandan. <laughs> Want to show the the picture I sent you? Yes. <laughs> I try to just let you keep talking while I. So last year, I look look through all of his Instagram stuff. Last year, he was a Sandan. There he is, Sensei Luis Carvalido, in his little uh, Tory Gate picture there. Sandan, eh? Interesting, you know. I noticed on his belt, the kanji's on his belt. It's not part of any organization. It just says Kyokushinkai. Mm. That's all it says on there. And then, and now, fast forward 2021, he's a fucking 10th Dan. <laughs> he's a fucking 10th Dan in these videos. 
Mm. But it, it's so... I mean, he must be... I, I don't know. I don't know how people think they're going to get away with this. Because last year, he's posting pictures and videos of himself as a Sandan. This year, he's posting videos and pictures of himself as a 10th Dan. And was it you that sent... Somebody sent me a video of him sparring. Was it you? I haven't sent any. I think people are just sending now. Yeah, because people want to... It is he can't awful. Do karate. It's he, awful. He is ter- this guy is terrible. He's not even show Dan level. No, no. Uh, oh, God, no. Older. I would say he's not even... All right. I would say he's maybe... 8th Q level, maybe? Yeah, <laughs> terrible. Absolutely shocking. But I'm like, I, even... All right, even he had a sand down on, right? Which was... You no, know, whatever. But then, how... Wha- how have you? How are you in a tenth Dan? How do you even think that you're going to get away with it? How do you even think you're getting away with it? But that's pretty. They, people are so fucking deluded. You probably think now, right? That video that he put up of the defensing on the gun that's probably jumped up by fifty thousand views, and he's probably thinking, eh, "I'm doing some good shit." You look at all the people that's watching it. It's been shared hundreds and thousands of times. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to say. It's it's it shocks me that people. I understand people did this back in the day before social media, and we were hardly aware of it. Or you just took people at face value uh, because you yeah. couldn't really. It, it was usually it. a thing. Someone went to Japan. They came back with an extra stripe. Yeah, and you know he was done behind closed doors. No one knows what happened. Yeah. Today you can search, and within three minutes you get the. You will find out everyone. You yeah. will find out everyone. Which is why you've got to have you've got to have a legit story. You know, there's so many people out there, so many people with holes in their stories, holes in their timelines, and it's like, which is why I'm being so open about mine, and I put it out to everyone, and it's like, no, this is exactly there's the timeline from day one to now, uh, and you've got to you've got to call people on the time and say. Hang on. Like, I, I know of someone. You left Kyokushin as a Sandan. Came back in as a 7th Dan. How does that work? And now you're with a 7th Dan in Kyokushin. How does that work? Where, where, where did they come from, man? Because you've been out of Kyokushin for two decades. So where have they come from? Maybe but that's like, the it, ticket. That's what I should do. You know, COVID, so I've been big. locked down with COVID. I haven't really done much. So well, when everything opens... Down by now. Yeah, right? <laughs> But, but why are we... Just, the problem is people are too polite. The jiu-jitsu community's got it right. If they see, they call people on their bullshit all the time. But wait a second. But we are, we are too polite. Didn't somebody we know message him? Who? This guy, Sensei Luis Carbolito or whatever. Didn't you message That's why him? I blocked him. I've messaged him as well. I commented. I, I, I looked at this video, right? And I messaged him. I, I just put a message on there saying, who the fuck are you? And that was it. <laughs> I didn't get a reply, funnily enough, weirdo. Uh, and right. I'm blocked. So I'm blocked from his Instagram. So whoever Shocking. comments on it gets blocked. Interesting. It is, it is, I've got to, re- I'm pretty sure it's mm. Venezuela. I think we've tracked down where it is in Venezuela. Yep. I need to start, people, Venezuelans, legit Venezuelans, you need to inbox me, message me, because we need to shut this down. <laughs> not violence. I'm not advocating violence. I don't want anybody getting hurt. But you take that fucking belt off him and burn it in front of him. <laughs> That's what I would do if I was close enough. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Hold on. I'm just it trying. It's crazy. I want to see if I can find. Uh... Oh, my God. You know, you would never, you, you, if someone said to you, Kyokushin is going to be shown on McDojo, oh, you'd be like, no, no, broke, it's never going to happen. It's never broke my heart. But, <laughs> and the thing is, we, but then again, it, it's like we've seen these, well, look, remember the video we showed of the woman doing her 100-man kuma day? You know, yeah. the, sorry, they are not Kyokushin, but they think they are. They wear the kanji. they got a picture on the wall. This guy is the same. He's bought the belt, and look how, how, how many, so as Marshall Way, right, how many messages a week do you get from Pakistani suppliers mm-hmm. wanting supplying you with geese, belts, certificates, and everything? 
It's non-stop. <laughs> I get at least 10 a week. At least yeah. 10 a week messages. Oh, let us supply you. Use our new belts. Use this. Use that. So it's not it's not hard to come by. No, it is not. I can have, I can have a 10th damn belt you by next week. Hey, I can't move on. It's doing Carter. Uh, he's got his Sandan belt on there. Mm. He's a third Dan there. Ascension. Wow. Just awful. Holy crap. Brutal. It is. To, it, it, but, but, Oh, how the but I do you know what else I think it is? People are so um just, just so deluded, so deluded that uh, and I you know we're told, listen, don't listen to people. If people disagree with you, they're haters. Don't listen to haters, you go, man, you know, power to you, you keep going. So people start to believe that, and then when anyone criticizes them and says, No, listen, you need to stop because you're bad, you're terrible, don't put that out. People are they think you're them. hating on them, and they'll put them out. People know this is full shit. People... <laughs> yeah, but look, but he's got likes. He's got likes and, and, and views on there, and people commenting who know no different going, oh, yeah, oh, well done, Ma the master. Well done, grandmaster. Fantastic. El Superior. What the fuck is this? Oh, that's oh, straight up. Wow. Just chopped his head off. That <laughs> is straight. I stand corrected. That is straight up legit stuff. <laughs> Oh my god, this is brutal. Brutal. Look at, I, I, look at all the kanji everywhere in the kanku. That's it. They completely over kanjified everything. Because the more kanjis you wear, obviously the more legit you are. Oh, here's some sparring. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just... Is he wearing a pair of Ronin Dojo gloves? <laughs> Have I sent him a Rolling Life t-shirt? Well, here's the one that got him in, got him famous. Got him in there, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> the only thing good about that is his gold watch, and that's probably fake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It's going oh, on switch and him on. Off. Switch him off. Switch him off. Oh, my God. I'm fed up of looking at him. It, it oh. is just utter trash. Utter, utter trash. But so the, he's doing the rounds at the moment. People are sharing it in all the groups and everywhere. Look, if people are messaging. Look, where the massive belt grades come from? Like it's. Yeah. Like, I, how do they expect to get away long. with this? Anyway, whatever. Because they do. He's got pictures. He's got certificates. Up. It, it, the world has changed from twenty years ago. Now you can print off your own certificates. <laughs> you can print them. You can get your own belts made. You can get your own geese made. I don't understand that stuff at all. I'll never, I'll, I will never. I mean, everybody's different in the way their brains work. I just don't, like, I, I don't, I'm not communicating well, but it, it just doesn't compute. It just doesn't compute. Well, it's the same as, and we talked about this, stolen valor, where yeah. these people that turn up to Memorial Days wearing full regalia yeah. with 20-odd medals on them, because, do you know, these people are nobodies in life. Like, and this man, okay, he's probably a nobody in life. Got no skills. We've clearly he's got no karate skill um, or nothing there. So this gives them that little, that little bit because non-martial arts people know no different. They don't know anything. That guy could chop a chopstick in half and people be like, oh my God, that's amazing. Did you see that? Did you see what he'd done? That's amazing. Because they know no different, so it gives them it gives them the a little bit of fame, is not it? I think so, but I, I honestly I think there's some sort of mental illness there. I really do. It's some sort of Got derangement, me. some sort of like twisted. Like he probably believes it. He, he there's a good possibility that he totally believes what he's. Well, in his head, he's a tenth down. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm getting at. <laughs> like that's mental illness. It is. That's mental illness. Like, there's a another uh, YouTube channel. I can't remember the name of it, but it's really good. It's about. It's a. Um, I've actually watched it in a couple of years, but it was a, a gentleman, a U.S. retired Navy SEAL, and he got fed up with people 
saying they're Navy SEALs, and they're not. Because it's a very, I mean, you guys have the SAS over there. It's, it's a very small, like, you know, they'll get like hundreds of applicants, and there's only a yeah. handful you, that you, make you it You can't through. say you were a Navy SEAL, and you can't say you were in the SAS mm -hmm. without someone knowing about it. Or exactly. someone that was there, knows the troop commander, knows this and knows that guy that knows this. So I, I'm going to apologize right now. It's downpouring. It might get loud here. We've had tornadoes here today. It's brutal. I can hear that. Um, anyway, so this guy was out. He Like you were talking about, he was just ticked off. He had enough of it. And he just goes, confronts them. He tracks them down. He'll confront. And he does it in a way like, hey, oh, you're you're the SEALs. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's awesome. What group? Oh, I was in there too. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he'll get them going. He'll like, they'll actually, oh, yeah, I yeah. fucking serve yeah. this. He'll be like, oh, that's interesting. Now, now, hold on a second. I was in Team 6, so I knew everybody in Team 4. I don't ever remember coming across you. <laughs> that awkward silence. It, 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 it. <laughs> but we should be do we should be doing this. We should be rocking up to dojos. Going <laughs> Oh you you're an eighth stand. Oh who so who did you train under then? Oh you trained under such and such. Where was they based? Honolulu. Oh. Can't say I've ever heard of it. But if you were in Hawaii, you must you must have come across and Bobby Lowe. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, the, the, we need to call <laughs> people on it. Because, like, I remember someone before, they were training, like, oh, I'm a, they were a sixth Dan in Kyokushin at the time. Well, in Kyokushin at the time. And it's like, well, where, where did you, where did you have your fifth Dan and sixth Dan from? From a guy in Japan. What guy was that? Mr. Wakanobi. <laughs> Wakanobi. Okay. Mr. Wakanobi. <laughs> Mr. Wakanobi, it's like, I can't say that I've heard of him myself, but, uh, okay, yeah, we trained in a secret village, he was my, I was his Ushideshi student, my nickname was the Dragon, this is straight up, someone told me, my nickname's the Dragon, Little Dragon. Oh shit, this is real? This is a real story, I won't say who it is, but this, I'm the Little Dragon, awesome. and you're just like... It's Todd, isn't it? <laughs> just no, kidding, Todd. Fra Framing Dragon. <laughs> just kidding, Todd, go on. Um, and then you're just like, mm, there's, there's holes, there's holes there, because what you're saying doesn't count up. The Kyokushin is a small world as well. And anyone of note, you would be like, oh, I, I know someone who knows someone who knows someone that trained there. Just a small world. So you're just like, listen, people pop up with grades on. And you're like, mm. it's, it's this stuff has been going on forever. And it's just now it's so much easier to find this. Shit. Like from the time fucking McDojo life posted this to the time that folks like you and I found out about it was not long. Right. And oh. people started tracking this shit down. But I remember back in the end, I, I don't want to say anything too much about this because even this, I could create enemies with hilarious. So I was in a different martial art and the whole history behind it. The, the, uh, if you read it, it's just, just nonsense, just absolute nonsense. And one portion of it is about this guy who was from Japan and it's like what you're talking, trained in a village that has secretly had, had ninjas in it or some bullshit yeah. and yeah. all this fucking not, not nonsense. Not <laughs> And not then Tsukau. ended up going to another place before he made it to Hawaii and did all this stuff. And it's like. Get the fuck out of here. Like, come on. Like, it's... In, in, but they pulled the wool over people's eyes back then, especially during the 1970s and 80s yeah, when you, you had no uh, way of verifying it. How would you corroborate it? You no, I remember it. somebody even on that story, someone trying to corroborate, and they literally had to go to Japan and look for records and stuff, which obviously they found nothing. Um, but nowadays, you could do it so easily. You could just be like, hey, uh, hey, hey, Jimmy... Do you know this guy who trained over? Never fucking heard of him. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Similar thing happened uh, again recently in Kyokushin. A guy popped up. Um, I forget his name now, but he popped up, started advertising himself. Oh, is this Kyokushin. the guy from um, Merrick or whatever his name is? Uh, is that who you're talking about? The last guy we talked about. Uh, which guy? No, 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 no. No, 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 not him, no, not him. Oh, okay. Oh, I've, I've been speaking to him, actually, but no, it's not him. Oh, yeah, it's, um, we need an update on that. All right. Uh, I, I, that's a di different time. <laughs> I've, because uh, I'm still laying the plans there. Oh, okay, okay. Um, no, this was another guy who was from Norway that popped up in the Kyokushin groups advertising himself. Um, 
and he would show a letter from the 60s of, of source i wrote him a letter saying uh you know i'm glad now that you know things will be good with your help as well and this and all that you know so, so a letter from the 60s but like that today is his verification of i was sources buddy you know what I mean? He had faith in me. Sent me a letter back in the sixties, um, and he had some new style that he'd invented. They didn't wear belts. They wore t-shirts, right? Different color t-shirts mm. for each Q grade, nice. and then you wore a black like t-shirt it. with stripes on the arm. I like it. Very military. I thought Love it was it. fantastic. Fantastic as the grade Japanese right? silk t-shirts. No, he hasn't got the cotton like this. Um. But th this guy popped up, and I instantly popped up, and I was like, I've never heard of you. I've never, never heard of you. you talk, like, back in the 60s, 70s, okay. His name, and I immediately, I was like, right, oh, you're from Norway. I know, I'll, uh, I'll message. Uh, so I messaged my friend in Norway, and I'm like, who's this guy? And he said, oh, this guy's a big fucking con artist. <laughs> At one time... He would. He was a legit Kyokushin guy. He was there. He had one of the biggest dojos um, in Norway. Huge dojo. He was into sports, into this, into that. In the end, he, he in the eighties, he walked away from his dojo, handed it over to his students, and there was some sort of big, like millions and millions of of Corona conning that the people with big sports stadiums, stuff like that. And he went underground and disappeared for a while, mm. but now he's reemerged as this Kyokushin guy trying to sell his, his Kyokushin ways. But within seconds, w w with it, w all within an hour, I'd, I'd bounced over to Norway, bounced to Australia, bounced back, spoken oh, to Cameron, mean, yeah. spoken to um, people there. And then within within an hour, poof, everyone was on him and being like, no, you're a big fake. You're a con artist. You're this, you're that, blah, blah, blah. Because the people who know you is here commenting against it. The world is a much, much smaller place now with social media. You, you, you can't get away with it. Yeah, and I, I know there are some people who are like, oh, well, whatever, they're not hurting anybody, let them be, you know. But yeah, it but is. it's con man then. It is, it's snake a fraud. Oil. It's, it's snake it's like oil, me selling you, selling you um, blood pressure tablets. Yeah, it's basically which I just, look like I need today. It's yeah, you, you, you <laughs> boiling in here. Blood I'm pressure. friggin' boiling in this room. Oh, and then... It note, is wrong. So, we're moving, moving in a month, so maybe I'll have. Uh, I won't be boiling in the new place. You found a new place. Yeah, found a new place. I don't know why you don't just get an air con there. Get mm. an air, air conditioning unit in your in your studio. We do. We have air conditioning, but this room, particularly this one, I'm facing the sunset. So even blinds right. down doesn't matter. It just it, like today was over thirty degrees. It just pours in like it's just anyway whatever. You got the air con on. Yeah, yeah. Of course it's on. All right. Okay. You still look a bit flushed. Yeah. yeah. You have that effect on me. Too. Okay. You are well, talking to me. <laughs> so let's move on from Carbalido and, oh and these fucking snakes that fraudsters, which will lead me then. So from absolute fraudsters, nobody's scumbags, stolen valor. To the other end of the spectrum? Right to the other end of the top. Top spectrum, and we'll give you an name so you know where it is. Alexander Karelin, the Russian bear. You call him the bear. I've never heard you call him the bear. Really? Must be Canadian thing. No, oh. I, the experiment. Yeah, that. I, him call <laughs> yes. experiment. I don't like calling him that. Actually, to be honest. Uh. So, uh, if people don't know, I posted this in Ronin Life uh, oh, here, earlier today or, or yesterday. Uh, just a, a video on Alexander Karelin uh, from Siberia, Russia. One of the most feared Olympic athletes, if not the most feared. Oh, Olympic definitely wrestler the most of feared. All time, of 100%. all time. There's not even a question. Yeah. The man. Yeah, you had posted this, the phenom. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Uh, that's a nice. That's a. Наверное, соотнес это со словами академика Вавилова. So people can go to the group and watch this. Yeah, I'm not going to play the whole thing there. It's in Russian. People can't read the subtitles, but yeah. this is Alexander Karolin. So to give you uh, uh, a little bit on Alexander Karolin, he is a three-time Olympic gold champion. 
Yeah. 88, 92, and 96, he won gold. Yeah. He is a nine-time world wrestling champion. What's his... What's his schedule? Or his schedule? His uh, fight schedule, record? I don't know, a very busy man. No, <laughs> what's his fight record? It's like ridiculous. It's like close to eight hundred wins and two losses, or something ridiculous. No, no, he's never he never lost a point in any of his matches. He lost a match, uh, dude. He lost the. If, if you're going to shut up, I'm fucking telling you. He never lost a point for 10 years. That's he correct. never gave away a point for 10 years. 13 times European champion, three gold Olympic medals, nine times world champion. Never lost a point up until the Sydney Games in 2000 what, where he what is, lost oh, that what, is match. That, what does that say there? Russian bears. Oh, interesting. Okay. No, it doesn't say he's the bear. It's, that thing is Russian bears. They're a training program. It's a personal Go trainer. on. I want to play this while you're telling. Go on. Keep going. No, because people need to look at it, isn't there? You oh, so there we go. 887 wins. 887 wins. It's so almost 900 wins. 87 wins. 887 match wins. Never lost a point. There we go. Three-time three time Olympic gold. champion, nine-time world champion, 12-time European champion. Oh, I got 13, I had. Yeah, you can't be perfect, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> but this, so this guy, was just, he, he had so, a thing called the Karolov lift. Uh, the yeah, Karolov yeah lift. I was just going to say, uh, yeah, that's exactly what he Basically, did. Basically, so you imagine for people on the podcast, someone yeah. laying face down on their belly. Let me see if I can find so, a clip. Well, they're on the podcast, so they can't watch it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. You can just describe it for the folks here. So I'm they're lying, here. lying face down. They would be. Carolyn would scoop one arm under the belly, one arm over the back, get to his knees, and basically lift you up in the air and throw you onto the floor. And he was doing that with guys who are 130 kilos. Yeah, like 260 pound men. He's just like, yeah. Just, just tossing them around like rag dolls. He's a beast, man. I'm gonna scrub a bit so we don't get in trouble. Absolute phenom he was. <laughs> phenom. Just, well, like a rag doll. Just rag doll around. But even when he was 13 years old, so when he first got into wrestling, he was 13. Uh, he went to a coach. At 13, he was 80 kilos and five foot eight. Yeah, completely so natural. It, you know. It, yeah. Well, at thirty, at thirteen though, at thirteen. Uh, so he was still a huge. Mm. He was a big guy then. I know. Obviously, he's been pumped to hell with all sorts of shit through the years, right? We're not disputing that. That's going to be the case. But there's still a lot of you know, steroids don't give you the training. No, and I'm not taking anything yeah. away from. I'm just kind of just you know. Uh, and like we've said this before, the with the Tour de France, everybody else is doing it as well. So by you doing it, it just keeps you on an even keel. Yeah. So he was, yeah, he was six foot three, 1.91 1 meters, 130 kilograms, 286 pounds. pounds. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Big guy. Beyond that, three. beyond that, he also, uh, I think if my memory serves me, he's also a PhD. Yeah. PhD and a law degree. Law degree and a politician. Now he's in politics, yeah. Yeah, smart man. So, so not not just a, not just a, a, a big mindless thing. Not, a, not just he's, a pretty you know, face. He he, stud, he studies literature. He yeah. likes ballet. He likes classical music. Yeah, he's, he's a very very well learned man. Yeah, and just this phenomenon. Yeah. Phenomenal so why, why, what was the big interest in him this week? How did that come up? Well, now I've seen now I've seen him before. Um, and I've looked at his stuff before, and I just pop, I think it popped up in one of my memories, mm -hmm. saying, "Oh, you shared this so many years ago," and I was like, "Oh yeah, Carolyn," and I, I watched it again, and then as you're watching, other videos pop up, and I found a new video of him talking and being interviewed, which was the one I shared in Ronin Life, which is a great um, video. So I will fun. post it right there. Hopefully, if not, I'll put it down there. <laughs> it's a, a cracking video because he's talking about it. Um, and then he's, he's a politician now in yeah. Russia. He's a politician. Um, so we're saying he never lost a point up until the Sydney Games in 2000. That's right. Yeah. So he, he was going for four Olympic gold medals. And he no one had American. ever. No, no one's done three. 
mm. in the wrestling like that. Um, but no, no one's ever done it. Uh, he would be truly the the greatest of all time, and would have retired without a single loss. Yeah. But but it didn't it, it <laughs> didn't it didn't go like that. So for some reason, on this Olympics, they introduced a new rule, whereby, uh, like a if you got a grip around the body, and you got your hands together, you wasn't allowed to release the grip. If you released the grip, they you reset. Give a point away. Yeah. If you released the grip, you would be you would lose that point. You'd oh, give weird. A point away. Okay. Only, that's the only time they've ever done it. Oh, weird. So for that games only, it was introduced that you're not allowed to let go. Didn't now, he yeah, also? He, sorry to interrupt, but didn't he also have a but, torn pec? Yeah, he tore his pec. Yeah. Not long um, before that. Not long before it. Yeah. So he was saying, like, you know, I, I was told, the doctor told me I'd never lift a spoon mm -hmm. up. Never mind wrestle again. Yeah. Uh, but suffice to say, he, he got in, then he was wrestling, he was doing it. Now, the guy he was wrestling, excuse me, the guy he was wrestling, Rulon Gardener from USA. Yeah. Um, a fairly new guy, young guy in his 20s. And at this time, Alexander, I think, was like 33, 34. Yeah, at least, yeah. So he's given away like 10, 10 years. Yeah. And he says himself, you know, I, I I was getting older. I could feel it. I could feel I was getting older. Um, I was still in good shape. But the preparation, I could feel, took, took its toll on me uh, for the training and stuff. Can I, I just want to point out one thing here. Go on. Because a lot of people say that, like, and they don't quite get it. Because I've heard that myself, and just in people who are not into, or people who don't train in any kind of combat sports and they'll hear things about fighters that would, like uh, george st pierre is an example i've heard people well, why do you retire he's only 30 whatever he's just i'm like you don't understand like maybe for the average per like george st pierre or this or or carolyn can fucking destroy and probably to this day the average person on the planet but when you're at a high level right and you start feeling your game is starting to slip it's it's very very different. So they're talking about minuscule things, and, right? And we've they're seen not it, though, we've, seen it. Yeah. we've seen people in the finals, and, yeah. and when when you, it comes down to minute infractions. Exactly. He yeah. ducked a little bit. His strength was gone a little bit. He didn't yeah. move quite he as quick. When he sh well, should have zagged. Yeah. Yeah, and when you're at that top top level, exactly like millimeters. Right. So yeah. when people feel like yeah, my game is off a bit. It's time to pack up. You can feel it. Yeah, yeah. you can feel yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so he said he knew that. He knew that going into it, but he was mm. still in good shape and he was yeah. still like you're doing it. So this new rule they introduced, right? You get the grip. That's weird. One, it, it was, that's the only time they've ever done it. The only time they've ever done it, right? Mm. So when you get when, when you get the grip around your opponent, this Greco-Roman wrestling, so when yeah. you get the grip around your opponent, once you've got the grip, you cannot release the grip. If you release the grip, it count, it'll count as a loss and a point against you. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so the guy he's wrestling, Rulon Gardner, uh, like I said, is about, about ten years younger. He's a huge guy. He's like a, 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 a chubby guy. He's like yeah. a farmer. Yeah. Huge, huge barrel chest, right? So the fact for Alexander to get his arms around him anyway was a struggle <laughs> was a to get his fingers. <laughs> Yeah, that was a struggle just to get his fingers together and, mm. and get any sort of grip there, right? Mm. Um, and, and from what else I've seen, because I've watched the match, I'll post that match under the comments in it as well. Um, Alexander had already had two fights that day. He'd had yes, two fights right. to get yeah. the, for some for some. I don't know. I don't know the ins and outs, but he'd had two fights. But Rulon had no fights. Oh, weird! Fight I didn't know final. that part. So he came I in fresh. This video, yeah, he was fresh. So oh. the the video I watched of it is uh, on the Olympic Channel. It was the the fight. I will post it in the room. Yeah, we'll pin it at the top under the Alexander video. Yeah. Pin him on there. Yeah. Um. So this is what they were saying on this. So he's had no fights. He's come in. He's fresh. Um. And he had. He, he went to do his signature move on on. So his signature move, like we said, get his arms underneath just lift them up in the air and toss them on the ground and he's doing that with guys who are 280 kilos <laughs> like ridiculous at uh, 280 pounds yeah like deadlifting from anyway yeah. yeah and honestly that's what we do he'd be on his knees on his floor 
he'd get the grip under you, he'd come up onto one foot, onto the other foot, stand up, lift you up in the air, and toss you onto the floor. <laughs> the, the strength is amazing. <laughs> it's insane. While someone's... Res- it's one thing to do it as a weight, but then someone's resisting. Yeah, they, and what they do, so they lay, lay flat. You've got to stay yeah. on your stomach if you go yeah. on your back. So they, they lay it all dead weight on the floor, trying to hold themselves down. Yeah. Uh, so he went to do his signature move on the guy and he, he couldn't get it. He didn't do it. So they reset and stuff. They were there. So he had a grip on him. And uh, and what he'd done, as they were moving, I'm not sure. I, you know, guys, if people know better than me about wrestling or Greco-Roman wrestling, put it in the comments, your views on it. Um, but they had that grip and you're not allowed to release the grip until it gets like down to waist level or something like that, right? But Alexander changed his grip. He went from that grip to that grip. Oh, he switched it. Yeah, while he was on there. So he didn't like let go of it, but he like he switched his grip as he yeah. had hold of the guy. And they so counted people, that as a release. Yeah, so well, people they were in shock a bit first. They were a bit like Whoa, whoa now. Something this this is a big game changer here. So they had all the head refs in, they went over to the table, they were talking, they were like, What what do we do? You know, because this technically, and then they're like, right, he's released the grip. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter of the minor. He's released that grip. So point against him. So point goes to Rulon, and Rulon didn't do anything really. Yeah, I know. He's a big I, guy. I he, didn't that fight. he didn't do anything. Um, so Carolyn is the first point he has ever lost in thirteen years. Yeah, about thirteen years, right? So. But Carolyn, again, he's, he's getting on with it. Can't, he, 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 what? They What's screwed bullshit? him. They screwed him. They, I mean, they never yeah, did but that's that. The, yeah, no, no it's, still, it's still the first point he's lost in 13 years. Yeah. I thought you were saying that was bullshit. No, I think it's bullshit that he made up this You think silly... Alexander Carolyn is bullshit? Because he's still alive. He come on. Fuck you up, Scott. Anyway, I think it's bullshit that You're in Alaska. He's only new, across the water from you. This new rule. Him and I will get along when, just fine. When the big freeze comes, he'll walk across the sea to you. <laughs> <laughs> he'll be there, knocking on your door. <laughs> he'll kick the door down. I need him to take anyway, a pee break. No, no pee breaks allowed. I have to. I drink. Oh. We should get a sponsorship from this we were talking about before. Bud Light Mango infused. <laughs> Bud Light is going to start sponsoring. Well, I'm us. drinking. J2O Spritz. <laughs> that's the kind of fit body as a temple kind okay, of guy. Do you have more to oh, Alright, I'll be right back. Yes, we haven't finished the fucking it. story. And the old man is back. <laughs> so in that in that short <laughs> interval, I've had to upgrade my drink oh. to a nice glass of semi million. <laughs> I'm not a beer drinker like Scott, folks. I'm not a beer drinker Ruffian. at all. And Coach I'm, not a beer. I'm more, more sophisticated man drinking wine. These mango-infused light beers for the summer are incredible. Is it Bud Light? It's Bud, Bud Light. Budweiser. Light. Yeah. Mango-infused. Anyway, whatever. Oh. Anyway, well, I lost that story done then. <laughs> Listen, you can't go for a piss break at, at the penultimate part of the story. Dude, you could have kept going. I, I, I was on a roll. I forgot what I was saying. I forgot what's going. I, that's was my, on. That's about? your problem. That's your. That's that sounds personal. Okay. Anyway, Karolov, Karolin, Karolov. That sounds more Russiany. Karolin was robbed, basically. Yes, he was. That's the only time they've ever put that rule in there. Boom. Yeah, so that, that's what the I'm only time ask. that rule. I was going to ask: Did that rule stick? Did it stay? I don't believe so. Mm. Not from what? Not from what I. Interesting. I, I'm not an expert, but from what I've gathered, that was the only Olympics they had that rule in for. So I'm sure there's conspiracy within the wrestling community that they had to do something to fucking stop him winning four Olympic gold medals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> you, because there was remember there was a very similar thing with. Um, Bill Kazmaier. Yeah. Remember Bill Kazmaier? So he won, like, uh, what was it? St- World's Strongest Man, like three times in a row. Yeah. But then they didn't invite him back. They kept him out of it for like five years. 
Yeah, it was weird. It is. It's, it's the and these things, you know, and like like we've said in the world tournaments, how certain Japanese fighters will have an easy run to the finals, where the other favorite has like had ten hard fights. Look at this man. Look. <laughs> God. Oh. 100% natural, that is. There's someone measuring his neck. <laughs> I wonder what he his, his neck was probably like my waist. I mean, he was big. No, he was big, right? But he wasn't that big. It was proportional. That's what or that's what yeah, it made he, it look. He's a weird, um, look at his shoulders popping out. And it's just, when you look at him, you think, actually, I've seen these bigger UFC wrestlers. Much bigger wrestlers. It, it's interesting you should say that too, because um, Joe Rogan... Not UFC, has, WWF. Joe Rogan has talked about this guy a lot. And he's talked about what what if. Like, what if this guy had made it? What if the times were different and he, he had gone to the UFC? What if? Mm. Like, could anybody have beaten him? Well, they say, some say, you know, a man like this comes around every thousand years. Just a beast, man. Just a Just, beast. Yeah, all, all right. And we can say, yeah, juiced up to the max. But, I mean, also, there's a lot of nat there's a lot of natural size because at 13 years old, he was 80 kilos and 5 foot 8. Exactly. Look, I, I, I listened and I've talked about on here before, more plates, more dates. He talks about this, too. How unless you, you can take all the juice and roids and whatever you want in the world. If you don't have natural genetics... Nothing's oh, happening. Nothing's happening. You yeah. might get a little bit of a, a increase, but a little nothing. bit of kip, a little help with recovery and stuff. A exactly. Little help with stuff. But we're only talking marginal stuff. Exactly. We're not talking. You can get you step, and then all of a sudden you're the best fighter in the world. Exactly. You still have to be a fighter. Exactly. You look at somebody like The Rock. Obviously, juice to the tits, but he also has. What? <laughs> I'm sorry to break the bubble. But, Wayne. Uh... <laughs> Wayne. My buddy Dwayne. Um, anyway, yeah, but obviously superior genetics, right? It's just incredible. Next, genetics. you'll be telling me Macho Man Randy Savage was juiced up as well. Oh, no, complete natural. And I will not hear it. Complete natural. Or, Al or Hulk Hogan. I will not hear it. <laughs> <laughs> None of them touched anything except uh, Flintstones, multivitamins, and milk. <laughs> creatine. That's the creatine. 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 You listen, you don't have beautiful blonde hair like Halcad if you were doing gear. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Jeans make a big part. And you said to me about like, his parents. His parents are quite small, though, are they? Yeah, I'm trying to find... I can't, f I can't find a picture. I was really trying to find... Because I came across a photo of him next to his parents. And, fuck, I can't find it, man. And it's but they say of, this. They say though, like they're like, like skips a generation as well. So oh, we don't know what his grandfather. We don't know what his what his grandparents or great grandparents were like. They could have been like Siberian Hulk monsters. Fair enough, but I wish I could. Let me do. Let's quick. Let's see. I'm just saying, if if at 13 years old you're 80 kilos, there's there's no gear there. He was. I'm sure they wouldn't given him steroids when he was like 10 or low. No comment. Yeah. No comment. We can't confirm nor deny. <laughs> Look how... Oh, here's a good shot that shows how big he is. Because he's... Here's, oh, I'm not sharing. Here's a shot of him. If I can friggin' find it. Uh, next to uh, Fedor. <clears throat> Where was it? I just saw it there. What is this? What's the, what thread am I in? What the hell? Good what God! You, what the hell are you <laughs> sharing, Scott? It was on here. Uh, anyway, there's a picture of him next. Oh, look, so you see it over here, Fedor. Like, he's so much bigger than Fedor, and Fedor yeah. is a big man. But anyway, oh, yeah, I tried to find him with his parents, and uh, I can't find it. But it was this so picture... This, you Funny you brought up Fedor then, because I list, if you listen to uh, I listened to Chael Sonnen yeah. from the UFC, is, Love Chael. and he was talking about he was about to fight Fedor, yeah, um, and he and then a backstage he was speaking to him, he was asking him, and he was saying, "Who would win in a fight between you and Carolyn?" <laughs> and what Fedor said, and I like well Fedor said, "Well, you know, we're diff we're different fighters. I I'm 
an MMA fighter. He's a wrestler. So we're different types of fighters. And he said, yeah, but who, you know, he was trying to get him to say, like, you know, who, who, who has the most respect? Who is, like, in Russia, you're both legends. Mm -hmm. Who is, like, you know, there? And, yeah, and he, as, as John, as, as Sonnen says about it, he said, he just wouldn't give anything away. He wouldn't say that Carolyn would beat me. And, oh, um, and he wouldn't say that I would beat him. Yeah. Well, it was just good. mutual... Just that mutual, mutual respect, respect there. Yeah. Uh, and from what I've heard of um, Carolyn, like he was, he was loved in Russia. He is, oh yeah, like a big god in Russia. In fact, when he when his twenties, Putin put him. Uh, I think it was, it was Putin. Then it might have been when he was younger. He mm -hmm. just put him straight in the military. You're general. Straight in general. <laughs> <You're> general. <laughs> never, straight into parliament, general. <laughs> he never served. Never did anything. Oh, it's surely a, a honorific title, but it's yeah. like general straight away. Because he, you know, he, he was that imposing and that much of a, a character. He's a beast. Oh, absolute beast! Uh, and I don't know if you uh, you listen to Sonnen says another story about um, Matt Lindland. Yep. Matt, the, uh, he does a lot of wrestling. Matt Lindland. Well, he was in Russia. Oh, he was in the UFC. Matt Lindland was he? Yeah, he, but he was in Russia fighting in the Cowling Cup. So right. there was a a, a Cowling Cup, where, which is kind of a. Not a professional, it's like an amateur underground type thing. Uh, lots of Russian mafia involved with it. <laughs> uh, heavily Russian mafia involved <laughs> with it. So he was fighting for a third place fight off, which means, you know, you to even get there, you've got to be good. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he's fighting for something on a third place fight off means that he was good. He was getting good there, right? But apparently... Uh, Matt was wrestling with one of these Russian guys, grabbed his thumb and snapped his thumb. Oh! He went, he went to move in on something, but he grabbed his thumb and snapped his thumb as he was doing it. And then he got the by, pin and by, got the win. Sorry, by accident or by on purpose? No, I think it was on purpose. He just like... <laughs> yeah, just grabbed, grabbed, as he went, and grabbed his thumb, snapped his thumb, put him over, got him in the pin and won. Mm. Um, so, of course, now... They get up and like the guy is like, oh, his thumb, and he he goes to the goes to the ref. Oh, my thumb, and he snapped his thumb, and then they were like, oh, right, okay. And there's mafia everywhere, everywhere, in there. So they were all on him and like, snapped his thumb, he's done this and that. So he doesn't know what to do. They're in this building in Russia, like down underground. I haven't got a clue what to do. What's going on? So he goes to his coach, um, and the coach was actually a a, a Russian coach that had been brought over to the USA to help train some of the uh, American wrestlers and he was saying to him, he said they've said this and he said this, blah blah blah, and he said what did you do? He said I broke his thumb, he said well yeah you're probably going to die <laughs> <laughs> so when your coach says to you yeah they're probably going to kill you <laughs> that's that you're like fuck so they managed to get out of the room um, and they're trying to go up through these staircases and stuff and everything but, and people are closing in on him basically he's surrounded by all these russian mafia everywhere so they they were like carolyn was in the building because it was the carolyn cup but um one of the other team one of the other people who were in the american team knew carolyn and had wrestled against him and was saying like get alexander call uh, alex and get him alexander you get alexander you so carolyn comes down he steps in find out what's going on blah 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 blah, blah. he looks at them turns around he says one word to the crowd in uh, this is what chael says in his story he says one word to the crowd shouts it out something Bleh! everyone disappears everyone goes that's it done what are you serious yeah wow. so if, if you look at chael sonnen's youtube and it yeah. talks about um how Karloff saved matt linden's life wow he tells this I'm story totally looking that up. yeah look it up so he walks in and he's like chael oh, tells an every... awesome story Everyone goes. Everyone leaves. <clears throat> but that was his, the magnitude of the man, eh? Right, right. So, folks, have a look at him. Have a look at it because he, he's. And when you watch him on the floor doing the, the Carolyn lift, it's like fuck you now. <laughs> just <laughs> just ma these massive guys who, who were like two two hundred and eighty pound guys, hundred and thirty kilos, scoops up underneath them and just stands up and lifts them up in the air. Yeah, I think that's what people. Backwards. It's hard for people to put in perspective. You when you look at these things because they look roughly the same size, and a lot of times, you got to remember these are giant men, 
and uh, it, it just even just think about yourself trying to pick up someone your own size and and put them over and now add another ridiculous amount of weight to that. Yeah. Well, most <laughs> people power. most people are what about eight, 80 kilo? Excuse me, eighty kilos ish. Maybe. Yeah. Average. I mean, yeah. I'm hundred hundred and five, slightly above average. <laughs> Average eighty odd kilos, so yeah, you can pick an eighty odd kilo man up. You are not one hundred and five kilos. I'm one hundred and five kilos. Oh my god! What were you five years ago? Well, nice and a kilo. Huh? What? Nice and a kilo. It's breaking up, is it? <laughs> Think the internet is going. <laughs> I'm in a tunnel. It's gonna be off. I'm I'm <laughs> no, I have put. So I went. I used to fight mid 70s uh i've never never made weight because it was i never fought in weight category it was always open weight mm -hmm. so i was about 73 to 75 naturally my fighters weight were uh, was i stopped competing and, you know you get i was in my 20s then so as you get older i went up to 80 kilos um and then i started getting bigger I went up to 90 kilos and it's like oh yeah it's a good good way started getting a bit of a belly then <laughs> And it was like 95 kilos. But I start like before the lockdown, I, I was weight training regular twice a week, all the time. And I was getting bigger, my chest, my shoulders, my arms, everything was getting bigger. And I was creeping up in weight a bit. Mm. Um, well, that's not a bad certainly, weight. Certainly, no, that's a good weight. But yeah. now I'm like 105 kilos. Well, now you're just fat. I've put on about, yeah, basically. <laughs> I've put, I've put on almost 10 kilos in this last two years of, of just lockdown shit. Yeah. And yeah, it's, and, and it's on my belly. I've, I, I've pulled it on my belly. That's what it is. From sugary drinks, drinking cider in the evenings. Yeah, sugar, is, a, and, sugar and is an evil, evil. It is. But we know it now. And it's, get, it's to the point where, you know, you bend over trying to put your shoelaces on. You've got to hold your breath. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, ah, baby, ah, I just got to, I need to loop the bow. <laughs> Slip on shoes. I'm That's leaning right forward. out. Now. I'm still working out all the time, but I'm leaning right out now. I actually have, my six pack is actually starting ah, to pop through. It's amazing. I'm so happy. That's good. I, I, I'm at the point now where I'm like, oh, look at them pythons. I'm at the point now where like, right, we'd, uh, but I still train. I still train hard. I like still do everything that I could do before. I can do everything I like did when I was like 75 kilos. Except for doing my shoelaces. Yeah, <laughs> that wasn't... <laughs> really? But, uh, I'm still, I can still kick the flexibility, still I can still wrestle, still moving, still running, still keep pace with anyone. Mm -hmm. Still fit. Yeah. But I've just oh, got, you're definitely I've fit. got a belly on me. Got a belly there. Get rid of that thing, man. It'll put you in the grave. Well, that's what we're working towards. That's what we're working towards now. Yeah. So what else is that? So we've talked about Carolyn. People, have a look at him, right? Have a look at this guy. Fantastic. Uh, what else is there new in the world of Kyokushin and martial arts? Uh, new in my world is uh, they're going to allow people in, allow people inside um, as a Friday. So we'll be starting to go inside for classes again, which is good. And, and you've got uh, a new dojo now where you are? Uh, not a new dojo. You've we're got we're a renting new... space, and we're yeah. We're you've got there. a new place, a new space where you are. And um, I, uh, as I mentioned on here before, I was going to do uh, jujitsu, but it fell through because both between the lockdowns and the per it was a bit of a long story. Kind of sucked. Mm -hmm. But now I've signed up, and I'm starting this week at a uh, Gracie Jiu Jitsu Academy, uh, Gracie Humata. Uh, and, uh, yeah, looking forward to that. Can't wait. Good. I'm nervous. Good. I, I, yeah, but, but it's, you know, it's really enjoyable. It's really good. Yeah, yeah. It I is. No, but just hate being the new guy and, and, and the white belt and all stuff. I mean, I have a little yeah, bit of experience, but anyway. You just got a fucking forearm on the throat all the time. Right for it. Yeah, yeah, so I was thinking to knock the feet out. And, yeah, sweep the leg. <laughs> Don't forget the oil check. <laughs> the oil check? Oil check is a very important technique. You not you not learned the oil check yet? No, I'm not familiar with the oil check. Oh, this will save you, right? This will save you. So while you're moving and maneuvering and getting around and stuff, if you ever get like a north-south position where mm -hmm. you're down by his bum, you get your finger, <laughs> your bum finger, and you go <laughs> like that. 
That's called the oil check. I can't believe you don't know about this. You, you go like, drum, are they? Whatever he's going for, he will forget about and just spasm and jump in the air. That's a legitimate technique. Legit technique, that is. Oh, wow. That's awesome. That's, I mean, that's yeah. a big... We just call it poking up the bum. But that's a, a big thing in, the, in BJJ is the oil check. Let's see. What is the oil check? <laughs> Wrestling move in Brazilian juice. And is it legal to perform in a fight? <laughs> oh, that is awesome. There's I think there's some... Pictures of people doing it. Oh, <laughs> Legalities about it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which, but, yeah, I think it's called rape. About... <laughs> <laughs> he penetrated me. It's totally legal technique. Yeah. Um, brings me to it. In Japan, there was a game called Kancho. Kancho? Kancho. Kancho, okay. this game, right? Yeah. Where you have your fingers like this. Oh, God. You sneak behind your friend. Oh, yes. And go boom. And stick Nori. your fingers up the bum. Nori <laughs> It's Nori told me about this. This is That's legit. I'm going to put it. This is actually true. Nori told that me is this. A, that is a true, legit game in Japan. Kids yeah. play that game. Kids play this game. Yeah. 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 So we're far behind on these things. Yeah. So That's all it. my students now get a, get a poke up the bum. Oh, Jesus. I'm preparing them for training. Preparing oh, them. God. Oh, I'm going to cut this part out. <laughs> Honestly. When you tell someone, tell someone, say, I don't know what an oil check is. I want to experience an oil check. No, I'm good. And then I'm good. Do it, do it in your roll. You get a finger around there. And it I'm... just spasms you. And you just, whatever old you're trying to go for, you will forget. Comment below. <laughs> Legit, listen, people. All to Terry. If, if you've been oil checked, let us know how it went. And let us... Let us know if you'd like to do the oil check. Let us know if your nickname is The Mechanic. Because <laughs> in jiu-jitsu, they call me The Mechanic. Oh, Jesus. It's <laughs> getting better. Oh, God. Yeah, so make yeah. sure you try that when you go. Yeah. So what else? Zip. What about your weight training? How's that going? Are you doing any weights? Yeah, I'm still. Uh, I, I switch things up a little bit. Um, so obviously, I'm, just using light weights. <laughs> uh, on a weight cut, I'm on a weight cut. How heavy are you? Uh, I don't know in your weight. Let me tell you, I am one real weight. Uh, 180 pounds to kg. I am 81.6 kg. Yeah, so 180 pounds. That's a good weight. Damn straight. 80 kilos. 80 kilos of ripped steel and panther piss. I'm in, <laughs> I'm, I'm in pretty good shape. I'm in pretty good shape. So yeah, now, yeah, I was that. trying to lean it out. So I do this thing, intermittent fasting, and it's... Is that going good? Oh, yeah. So here's the thing. that Something, there's a drastic change. I've always done this anyway because it's natural to me. I don't like eating breakfast. Never have. And right. I know... Everybody's like, it's an important meal. And I would try to do Kate's it. meal. Yeah, I would try to do it. But I just don't. I never did it. So I naturally always, from the last meal in the evening to the time I eat around noon, it's always 14 hours anyways, roughly. Wow. Can you hear that? I can, I can hear that coming down like golf wow. balls. So all I did was I increased that window by two hours. And fucking weight to start it, fat to start it's falling off. That's it. Yeah. Nothing. I never changed anything else. No, nothing else changed. Weight regime, everything, workouts, everything stayed the same. So what times you doing? So you, for, what times you fast for? <laughs> place is gonna come down. Fourteen. I can hear that. Uh, whatever. So I, I'll, I'll like I'll stop my whatever. I just time it uh, if I have my last, and I, I'll count anything a meal, even if it's a snack, even if I have a handful of peanuts, bef you know, while I'm watching TV or something at night, that will be my last, whatever that was, I won't eat then again for whatever, 14 to 16 14 hours. hours. Yeah, 14 to 16 hours after that. Mm. Yeah, that's a huge that difference. Works amazing. I have more energy. Um... I just, uh, I, more cognitive, everything. Everything's better. I just feel better. When I'm eating all the time, like when I was trying to gain weight and Do I was... Do you not drink as well? Oh, yeah. Water, you mean? Do, 
drink you drink fluids though while you do oh it. shit i drink a lot of fluids during the day the even like before right. n- before noon i would say I, i'm already put in about a liter and a half of water so i'm drinking just a lot. water you're drinking is it yeah watered lemon yeah and um so yeah that really really works for me and then i was watching a podcast uh it's probably rogan but i can't remember who it was what or lex friedman and they had some scientists on there and they were talking about um uh, intermittent fasting and why it works and then they're bringing it back to their, our hunter gather days where we didn't have three meals a day you were lucky if you got one and mm-hmm. and it's the way the human body worked like that and it kind of makes sense and but it, again you, there's no diet people are always like trying to pitch people on diets i'm not pitching anybody on this everyone is different what works for one person is not going to work for another and i remember another podcast where i saw uh oh shit her name's escaped me now she's this doctor that rogan used to have on all the time oh, people out there are probably screaming at me right now because they know who i'm talking about anyway her and her husband were doing this experiment where they had the exact same diet pretty much same lifestyle and they were doing daily blood tests and stuff like that so you would expect to be relatively similar completely yeah. different completely different numbers completely different readings everything People are just different. Everyone's different. If I eat a tablespoon yeah. of sugar, it's going to affect me completely different than the next person. So, anyway, it's working well. Of sugar won't, tablespoon of sugar won't even register in my body. <laughs> You're so used to it. <laughs> it I don't, so heavily, I don't eat sugar. Heavily I never put sugar, sugar in. I never put sugar in anything. I don't eat anything I, sweet. I don't. I stay away I from don't have, I've put sugar in my drinks, but my drinks are sugary by by definition of, of See, being like soft drinks and stuff yeah i don't i don't drink any of that shit i don't drink any well, i would, li- I like, would like in the evening i'd like to not like sugar but i love sugar i, I love a bit of, like i love a bit of chocolate my brother's like, like my fa- favorite is cadbury's cadbury's dairy milk right a bit of chocolate a bit of milk yeah. I, I i have to have a bit of chocolate every day so if i've had food nice meal savory food it's like right i want something sweet to counterbalance my taste buds i want a bit of chocolate moderation do, you just gotta do, do a moderation a yeah one bar a day one kilo bar a day so i <laughs> one, well, one, bar, one a day. bar a day <laughs> so i um yeah heavily addicted to sugar and don't blame me blame the government and blame the scientists that came out with their erroneous stupid report there's that true that it, that's true yeah that emulsified fat was bad for you yes. sugar was good for you with fat is actually good for you they were literally busted for that and you that's know the, why i'm fat do you know the sad part is this that so what terry's telling you is a hundred percent it's fact it's not a whatever it's a fact so the sugar injury industry paid off these health experts Money. Actually, this is the funny part. It wasn't that huge money. When you think of big money, we think millions and millions. They didn't get that much. They got a few no, hundred I mean, thousand. There's big money in the sugar industry. Oh, yeah. Huge money. You know, there's even fucking sugar in a loaf of bread. It's crazy, man. So they paid off the industry to say that fat was bad. <laughs> fat was harmful to humans. Uh, sugar is all good. Everything uh, and, and all these other processed garbage and, and all this stuff. Anyway, just horrific. Horrific. I think they should be on war crimes. They literally decimated generations of people. <clears throat> Especially you look yeah, at look, North look, America. Is, we're so overweight. America is terrible. I'm Britain as well now with the obesity in Britain. Terrible. Like the amount of sugar. And people never think of it. Like they think of a Big Mac and they just think of like calories and they think of carbs and stuff. But they don't. You know how sugar is in one of those fucking things to get it people addicted? It's sugar insane. is in every fucking thing. And the other like thing, e- even in a loaf of bread, yeah. by a loaf, you think, right, I can't go wrong with a loaf of bread. Yeah. There's sugar in it. Yeah. And one of the effects I get from sugar, one of the main reasons I cut it out was inflammation. I was, I used to get so much right. joint. It, I'd be always bloated and I, my fingers were, t- everything was just bloated. And when I cut sugar out, all that went away. Just gone. I've, but I've had, I mean, and I'll say again, your lifestyles, how you brought up and everything. Oh, yeah. And that I've, I've brought up on, I, I, you know, I've always had chocolate from a baby, right. biscuits, chocolate, stuff like that. So I've grown up on that all the time. Right. Um, so to me, I, I, it's, I've had it all my life. I kind of like, I can't do without it. I, you know, I well, need to it's have a choice. some chocolate. You can no. do without, it's a choice. No, I won't. I can't imagine. <laughs> well, what again, it's a choice. It. Huh? 
can't imagine what I'd be like without it. I'd go on a fucking killing rampage. <laughs> uh, well, the last episode but, was but, good. We didn't even talk about the last episode, but I was really proud of us. Cut, that cut, we... me, cut me right off. Cut me oh, right I'm off sorry. I didn't realize. I apologize. Mid-sentence. Just cut me. I'll tell you what. Let's just let Scott talk. I'll just sit there. I'm sorry. I didn't realize that. I apologize. I was just going to say, so knowing what I'm like with sugar, Seb, don't give him any sugar. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. From a baby. That's smart. Yes, not, you, when you're like, oh, give him a little bit of chocolate. He'll no. be all right. Give him a... No, we don't. We kept him off all the sugar. We kept him off chocolate. He drinks water. That's all he drank. Smart. I mean, now he has, he has a, he's four now. Yeah. So he know. I mean, he likes an ice cream now and he likes apple juice. Yeah. Um, and he'll have a little bit of chocolate here and there, but we don't give him crap. It's not the norm, yeah. And yeah. he's never had, he's never had a fast food. He's yeah, never good. had a McDonald's. That's awesome. Good. The amount, the amount, it shocks me when I see people giving toddlers, little baby toddlers, McDonald's. It's disgusting, man. It's gross. Yeah. It's crazy. It's gross. Yeah. But then moving on. You no, it's just about our last, yeah, yeah, the, the last, last show. show. I was really proud of it. It was like you know, I wish I had spent more time on. It and we had got more interviews and whatever, but it was really nice. And we got, we got a lot of super awesome feedback on it, so I was glad that we were able to do that. So kudos to you for putting most of the arrangement around that. It was the right thing to do, though, wasn't it? I mean, this, yeah, it, it's a big departure in the Kyokushin world. Yeah, and a lot of people like. I mean, we got a lot of views on. It. I think it was close to like six hundred views, and yeah. It was amazing. Uh, still not that much. Yeah, still not that much. When, when you think, yeah, but when you think about the episode we'd done on uh, End Camp, that had over a thousand views. I'm looking for it here, trying to find it. This is something like number seven. Holy shit, you're like right. That. It's almost 3,000 views. Fuck it, 3,000 views. <laughs> almost getting there. We need more controversy. Okay. <laughs> Do you want some controversy? I'll give you some controversy, right? Terry's not wearing pants. Bruce Lee. <laughs> I've got pants on. Got pants <laughs> oh, on. God. Hey. <laughs> Bruce Lee was a coke addict. What? Shut your mouth. Bruce How do you Lee was know a this? Addict. You're a liar, I Terry. This. I know this. There's some controversy. I, I don't need to tell you how I know this, but I know this. He was a, uh, a pothead and a cocaine addict. Well, I'm a bit of a pothead myself, so I can't say much there. A but, drug uh, user. <laughs> drug user. Um, yeah. This is what my shock What have you got to say face. about that? This is my shock What face. have you got to say about that? No, I don't care. <laughs> I don't really care. Shock. It was that time. He was a known drug user. He was an actor in Hollywood and doing all these things. He was a user. Druggy. Oh. Drug addict. Drug addict. There's some controversy for you. It's not controversial. Probably no, most actually, people know that's that. That's actually true. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, it's there's probably true. is true. I'm not I saying it is or not. There, I don't see any proof, but it wouldn't shock me at all. I I listened, no, I listened to it earlier. There was a guy talking about this, some letters from a guy who was on a film with him and they became quite correspondents and they wrote letters back and forth. Mm -hmm. Now, these letters have just been, so, no, those letters have been put up in auction by Linda Lee. Okay. Um, so they, they've been sold out. No, not Linda Lee, by the, the, the wife of the guy who had the letters from Bruce. Oh. Anyway, the letter's gone out. And it talks about the letters. They're talking back and forth. Bruce had a, a back injury yeah, before, yeah. Bad before back the injury. big back injury. Oh, okay. Before, yeah. before he had the, the big one that paralyzed him, he, he was still had a bad back. He, he had like an injury from so much training all the time. So he was getting uh, a lot of weed, smoking a, a lot of marijuana. Nothing wrong with that. Big, which and that and we're again back in the 60s 70s that, that was the thing everyone did it yeah. but it's just funny in these letters this correspondence back and forth uh and then it says something uh, i think it was something along the line people have left if you search youtube it's there oh, it's all sure. like they're there people talking about it and the letters are there hmm. whether they're i don't know whether they're real letters or not there's never no one have said they're fake hmm. it's like well you know these are legitimate letters mm -hmm. he talks about them, they're saying oh Bruce wants some more cocaine or whatever. He liked that, blah, blah, blah. I'll come and get it for him and blah, 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 blah. Hang it on. Yeah, so that was, whatever. but again, it was the 60s, 70s in Hollywood. Different time, different whatever, whatever. And he was all That's fine not controversial. Then. That's controversial. Not controversial. controversial. All the little Bruce Lee fans will be coming on now. We'll have 10,000. 
Yeah. <laughs> but in that, another thing we learned on that is where uh, Linda Lee is his wife, isn't it? Yes, Linda was his wife. Yes, Sharon committed was... per- committed perjury. What? Because they had a life insurance policy. So mm-hmm. in the life insurance policy, it asks you, "Do you use any drugs?" And this was this was in this story about him. Do you use any drugs? And and Bruce said, "No, I don't use any drugs." Um, of course, when he died, he had marijuana in his system, and that's on the toxicology report saying there was marijuana in his system. So she had to go to court about this insurance life policy because they were saying they weren't going to pay it out. Yeah, they weren't going to pay it out. They were, it was like, no, it's void. Because of void. pot. Good God. So they asked her and said, um, "Do you, you know, did he ever take any pot? She's like, not, not. To my not knowledge, to my knowledge. Yeah. not to my knowledge, no. And it's like, well, actually, you've got letters where you're saying he wants more of it. Give it to me. <laughs> He's asked me to come and collect it. So hey, that was an interesting do, thing. Got to do what you got to do. <laughs> These insurance yeah, companies I are mean, mafia, I, so I, I, I don't care. I don't care either. But, but there's a bit of a uh, bit of controversy for people. <laughs> uh, MMA controversy this year, this past week. The Conor Trump McGregor what? fight. Did you see it? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Oh, fine. yeah. We, why we should have talked about that sooner? Yeah, just the McGregor me. fight. Um, Very bizarre. St- extremely bizarre. I have my own know, theories I, I was, on it, but I just watched a video of Connor talking about it. He's just come out of hospital. Just had surgery. He's got a titanium rod. Yeah, yeah, I saw that now. too. Yeah, um, yeah. So he he's in there talking, saying he'd already had multiple stretch fractures in his shin and it's, he, I, what he says is it's well documented ask the ufc doctors ask dana white it's well documented multiple stress fractures in his leg it's, the, yeah, it's it. been there the amount of training he does the amount of thing is there all the time i believe he, um, it. and not only that it's um i don't mean i'm sorry not cutting off I, I, it, they, they don't train um the way like somebody like Kyokushin people do like the conditioning of like multiple, like can, you know, the con- literally yeah. conditioning for, for that type of thing. They really don't. It's just quite no, interesting. They, they to don't me. do, it. But, but, and I was thinking this actually when I, when I, I was thinking about today actually. Um, and it's like, well, how, how, it's cause you know, we, there's been a couple of these nasty, like three, four nasty tip fib bricks. Yeah. And it's all just from low kicks catching. And when we think like, Fucking hell, we got we got teenagers brace, breaking baseball bats with low kicks. However, uh, there is a Kyokushin guy that did do yeah, this. Well, you, you said uh, Nick Pettis. Yeah, yeah, that's a freak. Uh, but that's the only one I have ever yeah, ever heard one. of. It must have been just a freak accident. It, also, it's when it happened in the UFC, uh, in the McGregor fight. So I watched. Obviously, I watched the fight. And then, and when yeah. it happened, uh, actually, Ariel was there with me too. She saw it. She was like horrified. And then, uh, but we couldn't figure out why. And they, and even in the moment, they're playing back. They couldn't figure out what had happened. And then there was speculation. There was like that the, his leg had gotten checked. I looked at that and I was like, mm, there was not much of a check not there. Really a check. He hit no. him on the thigh. Yeah, it was on the. It wasn't wasn't much at all. And uh, so, but then somebody I can't remember. Actually, was it Chael Sonnen? No, somebody picked it up that. Uh, right before the like the straw that broke the back, he basically kind of did almost like a front kick, and it got blocked by um, the forearm. Mm. And you can that's see, big, and they do a one. close up. They do a real close up, and you literally see his his, uh, his shin just kind of go uh, like it bends a bit, like it just just slightly, yeah. just a little bit. It goes, and they're like, holy shit. And then after that's when he steps back, and the whole thing collapses. And it goes. Yeah, brutal he, though. He was just, he was, and that's why he was shouting now. Get the fuck because we watched the fight and you heard him shouting when he was, um, they, they didn't know what was going on. They were going to give it a win, and he was like, It's a no contest, no fucking contest. It's Which I no agree contest. with him. I agree with him. Yeah, injury. That, you can't, you can't. It's, that, how it's is a, that a win? A how is that a win? It's, it's, Did it, is it down as a proper win? Yes. It's, it's, it's. Yeah, how I don't understand how they've done that win. Then it's no contest. He's he's broken his leg in the fight. Yeah, I don't get it. Um, and the other thing, and you know what? There are two other things actually around this. First of all, the last fight that Connor had, he was very polite and very nice, and everybody's like, "Oh, 
Where's the old Connor? People want the friggin' the trash talk people and all this kind of stuff. People want, people want that. They want someone to hate. Right. And then he is. And now, oh, he's an asshole. He's such an asshole. Like, he can't win. Like, he, he can't win. He's not, he's not going to win. Well, no. he's already fucking won. Oh, Connor's yeah. You got that right. Highest paid time. athlete uh, this past year. Any sport. Um, but then on top of this, and this is where, I, I don't know, people know he literally snapped that leg right off. Imagine how painful that is. And that motherfucker sat there, still talking, trash talking, talking to Rogan, all this kind of stuff. Didn't even phase him. Yeah. He's a tough guy. And, 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 tough and guy. He, had, he had the um, the compass mentis to be like, no, look, this is what's happened. No, it's a no contest. No yeah. contest. Um, no, it wasn't. He said, you didn't fucking check it. It wasn't checked. There was no check there. Uh, yeah. And what he said in his earlier video, he said there, there was multiple compound fractures in there over the years of training. He'd had some problems that. with his ankle anyway before the fight, um, all documented with the UFC doctors. Um, so he had caught someone in sparring before because they were wearing shimpa. He caught it and it, it had like, well, I'd done it a little bit, but he tried to stay off it and then went in the fight, done the kicks, went down, done that block, went down heavy on it. And it had gone. So that you know, this yeah. is a couple of years worth of building up and a bit of damage to this. Um, I want to and it happens, doesn't it? As you say, it happens. It's, it's a, a bad break. You know, he's gonna. And he said himself. He said, "I." He said, "I'm where I need to be now. I'm kind of glad this happened in a way because I would never have gone and had the surgery. So and, and stopped fighting. They did call it, yeah, TKO." Technical knockout, doctor stoppage due to leg injury. How? Bullshit. But I, I thought, is that not a... So what happens then? What happens when... Because um, he broke his leg, didn't he? Um, I forgot his name. Poria. Didn't didn't Poria break his leg once? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't we were know. talking about it before. Who broke their leg? So you had you had the, the spider. No, no, no. It wasn't him. It was the same guy who fought, fought Anderson Silva. And they had the exact same accident. Yeah, who was that then? I can't think of his name now. Oh, I can't remember. I remember. Uh, I anyway, I yeah, so it. he... Um, I can't remember what I was saying. He was <laughs> saying uh, that he was uh, kind of glad that it was over with because now he's oh, going yeah, to have to address it. Because now, now, now he's got a titanium rod in his shin. He would never have had it before. However, my only thing with this is not one fighter has ever come back from this injury. injury, ugh, injury. Not one. I mean, they've come back in the sense they've come back in the ring and fought, but they've never uh, gotten back to the level they were. It's got to be a big psychological thing, isn't it? Yeah. So you I was will really never thinking, throw that kick the same again, will you? No. And I remember, I don't know who it was. I don't know if it was Anderson Silva or who it was that was talking about. I don't think it was Silva. Maybe it was Nick Pettis. I don't know. Somebody was talking about it. That with that type of injury, you can come back into the fight and you think you're... 100%, you feel amazing. But there's something in the lizard brain and your ab yeah. amygdala, or whatever it's called, that just is like, no, nope, no, nope, we were here before and you got drastically injured. Yeah. So, and, and as hard as you try to kick, your body will pull it. Yes. That's what he, whoever that was, they were saying, like, psych, like their subconscious just kind of pulls it back a bit and they just never can reach. And we know it. Anderson Silver never did. He never came back to that level again. None of them did. No, no one who this happened to. It's a shame. It's a shame it happened to Connor. Because I, I like Connor. I love uh, Connor. I he's people a charismatic can hate guy. him all they want. I love the guy. You, I tell you what, fight. people, you should, yeah. He, he's, 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 done, he's doing what the boxers do. Man. Selling fights. He he says it himself. He got it from Muhammad Ali. It's his idol. And if you so when Muhammad Ali done it, it was fantastic. It was great. But he was a shit talker. He was Just a total shit, shit talker all the time. He was he was so <laughs> but like and you could say so arrogant. Yeah. No one could beat me. I'm the greatest. I'm the fan. Yeah. So arrogant yeah. shit talker. But yeah. yet Muhammad Ali, the greatest of all time. <laughs> it's weird. So eh? Worth Connor does it. The Irish boy does it. Oh, he's a fucking wanker. Trash yeah. talking wanker, scumbag trash. I do think Connor lost his way a little bit. He got, he was a you know young teenage guy from Ireland, poor part, really poor part. Yeah. Excuse me, of Ireland, and he's and he's now multi, multi, multi millionaire. 
Yeah, he's one worth of the, like one of the three hundred million dollars. Is known, insane. Best known sports. Actually, no, he had a billion. He, he, I think he's close to. Anyway, yeah, go on. Sorry, I'm excited. Has he hit a billion? We'll have to I'm look gonna, in that. Have to check yeah. that out because he's got his own whiskey drink, proper twelve. He's got his own bars. He sold he's got it, his own man. clothing lines. He, he sold smart. the whiskey line. Have he? he sold the whiskey line, but he still stays on as uh, he's on the on the board. So he still has shares board. in it. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Yes, clever guy, clever guy, and he's surrounded himself with good people, and he's listened to good people as well. He's also partnered. Um, I can't remember. It's something in McGregor as a clothing line. No, his current worth is four hundred US, four hundred million dollars US. Ah, so he's a bit off a billion, but <laughs> still, goal, you know, though. he's almost there. He's almost half a billion, and he'll get there because he's what? He's only thirty-four. Oh yeah, he's young. Thirty-five. He's a yeah, baby. he will get he's there. A baby, he will get because he's got the brand in. And if you want, so so people, if you hate <sighs> McGregor, right? Search YouTube and listen to his interview with um, Anthony Robbins. Yes, yes, fantastic, fantastic interview. interview. <laughs> he talks. Yeah, you listen to that as well. Oh yeah, it's a fucking many yeah, times. Fun. Fantastic interview. So, and you listen to, him and you can see the man behind the hype. Yeah, you, you can see, see the evolution. Is. You can see how strongly he believed in 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 the uh, uh, in the power of manifestation. Like, it, keep it in the mind, keep it in front of you, and you will obtain it if you work your ass off yeah. towards that. Well, goal. look at his career. He's called everything. He and called he's done everything, everything that he said he was going to do. Yeah. Even his fights, a lot of his fights, he used to call his fights and say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and drop him and with this, did. drop him with that. And that's and what happened. Yeah, yeah. It is. I'm a big McGregor fan. I, I, I like him. Me too. Like I said, he lost his way a bit, the whole thing with Khabib and, and the bus and the yeah, throw in the thing. That's a, but you do, and I've said this before when I was on the door, you, you do get a little bit high on your own juice. Of course you do. You do, yeah. you do start to think you're invincible, and especially if you're surrounded by little yes men that yeah. do oh, whatever you want and say whatever you want. I need to pause for a second. Is it? Well, it's up past one. Sorry about that, folks. A little technical difficulty. Oh, look at the oh, face. Oh, he's back, is he? <laughs> oh, he's back, is he? Oh. You're, Couldn't wait two fucking minutes. We were rounding the show up. We are around to show up, but I'm worried about your internet too. Is it dropping? Is yeah, it's just I... a little. You're, it's not freezing, but it's a little like or jittery. You? Yeah, blurry. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that the face that you have when you do? What's the oil change? Is that what it's called? <laughs> That's the oil change face. <laughs> well, uh, we're rounding it up anyway. We're rounding it up. Rounding it up. So we're talking about Connor, yeah. I like Connor. He's a good guy. I, I, I to this. Uh... Go on. <laughs> Nothing. I've just interrupted say... me. So you fucking interrupted me. So you may as well finish. No, I was just going to say, say the same thing. I think I think people get caught up in. He's a smart guy. He knows what sells. He knows how to build hype. He knows how to do all this do this stuff. And the fact that some people get wind up and hate it means he's doing it well. <laughs> he's good yeah. at it. Yeah. That's I'm... It, but it, it's the same as anything, isn't it? it, it you've got to have your haters. Yeah. Make all the comments about how much they hate you. Now, now don't get me no. wrong. Like, I love hey. the people in... We're talking about MMA now and UFC. Like, the folks like uh, George St. Pierre and the others that come out and uh, Machida and that. They have these backgrounds in traditional martial arts and they're very loose. They're very respectful to each other. I love that, too. Don't get me wrong. I really love it. And yeah, we, and we and need, they, but they're boring. It can be boring. They're so lovely, it, but at the boring. End, at the end of the day, UFC is an entertainment organization. Before they are a combat organization, they are an entertainment organization, and they're there to and entertain and make money. If people are not people are not paying to watch, then there's, there's no, no UFC. UFC. Exactly. So if you have remember, an, remember yeah, go on. I was say, remember we had a conversation when we were talking about it, and. I would just watch the the McGregor interview with thing, and I think I sent it to you. And we were talking about um, JSP and McGregor and this and stuff. Uh, and you were saying like, you know, JSP is really well known as well, and you know, lived. But it's like, look at the Instagram. JSP's got something like three million followers. McGregor's got something like thirty million followers. 
just and you know on Brebby half of those fucking hate him I was just gonna say him a huge part hate him and he's yeah, sitting back but going they still follow him <laughs> <laughs> they still follow him and they still comment and, all, and whether the comments are good or bad social media doesn't care all they're doing is counting the thousands of comments yes. and the hundreds of thousands of views that's true that's very very true I wish our haters would comment more. I know. Because we got them out there. They're just creeping around, lurking. Have some bollocks. And tell us how much you hate us in five messages. Little spread snakes. it out. Spread it out in the messages. <laughs> Say it. Snakes, they are. Snakes and rats. <laughs> <laughs> spread, <laughs> spread it out in the messages. Don't leave it all for one. Split it up. Get all the messages in there. Tell us how much you hate Scott. If you have, Tell us how much. That's right. If you have a bunch of negative things to say, put it in each separate comment. <laughs> Part one. No one hates you, though. That's the problem. Yeah, I said, write me a thesis. Do it. Do me a 10 list. 10 message point list. How much you hate me. Tell me, people. I got to say, I look forward to these evenings when we do this. I got to be honest. Like, especially lately, it's been... Oh my god! Between house searching and friggin' work going through a transition and intensity, it's just it's just friggin' intense. Yeah. So this is an on. awesome opportunity just to sit back and just chat about stuff. Well, we found. Do you know what? Well, I found that we don't because because me and Scott used to speak all the time. We'd speak yeah. every other day, pretty much. Yeah. I found since we've been doing the shows, though, we don't speak. No. <laughs> We have we don't speak now. Yeah, exactly. We just leave it and then do it all in the show. It's true. So like I, what cool. you see is us having our catch up as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, we'll do our giveaway this week. We'll do a Ronin Life T-shirt. I know where I should Ooh. wear that. Is it going to be Ronin a Japanese silk? Uh... It's Japanese cotton. Japanese cotton. Japanese cotton. Yeah. It's not silk. It's Japanese cotton. <laughs> um, all TDG on. It's like the logo doesn't come off. Fantastic quality. So again, do the same thing. Share the show. Tag me and Scott in it. Don't share the episode. Share the channel. Share it. Tag us in there. And we'll next week, we'll pick it out. And I will send you a Ronin Life t-shirt. Nice. Thirty pounds they retail at. <laughs> Thirty pounds, and you were having it for fuck all. <laughs> Just postage, twenty four ninety nine. <laughs> uh, no. Oh, oh did well, you send well, the hat out? Yes. Will the person have to pay for their own postage? <laughs> their own, oh, their yeah. own shipping. The postage. You just pay for your own shipping. It's only twenty four. Cash 99. on delivery. <laughs> You imagine. Listen, I I am not responsible for what for what uh, tariff fees you have to in your own country. Good point. You know, you may have another twenty five pound knocked on that when it gets to your country. That's not my fault. Good point. That actually happened to me. Somebody sent me something. A friend sent me something from California, and he had to declare on it what it was and stuff. They tried to make me pay import fees on. It. I'm like, are you joking? This is a gift. My it's friend sent to me a, a gift few times. I've had it a oh, few times so for stuff pissed. about that. Oh, and so what pissed. you do is you get a note through your letterbox saying, is the import duty to be yeah. paid? Yeah. Take the post. And I'm like, for what? Yeah. I have no idea. What? Exactly. So I go, down to the, I go down to the depot and I'm like, what is there? And they're like, oh, we've got to pay. I said, no, you can fucking show me what it is first. <laughs> what is it? Show me the envelope. And I'm like this in the light. What the fuck is this? <laughs> oh, I know what it is. Yeah. Yeah. I'll pay it. I know. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but a couple of times, a couple of times that's had me, uh, and it's not always cheap. It can be like twenty quid. It's man, when I was still getting stuff from Isami for the dojo, it was such a. Oh, I swear to God, the whole thing is a scam. I would order, and we would order like bulk, so I would get like I don't know thirty geese or whatever the case may be, right? And so they would come. So sometimes I do an order, no import fees. They show up, whatever, sign it off, yeah. whatever. Order next one. You owe a hundred dollars. What? <laughs> so, it's so random. It's so bizarre. It's crazy. I bet it's. Just, I bet it's not even computer red. But like just some guy signing around there and going, "Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. That's all right." Whoa! Banging for fees. Yeah, I th I do. I honestly think that. I think they just randomly flag ones and yeah. Because I had uh, what I, I ordered a poster the the um the one Kyokushin um. 
can you doesn't see show that? up with the green screen. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Did that poster anyway from mm. uh, Half Sumo, the one that uh, Sammy was advertising on One Kyokushin. I just I ordered one of them. Half Sumo myself. Yep. Anyway, they got a, oh, the, the poster is fantastic. Stuff. Everything like, is federal, amazing. Federal, federal paper stuff. Half Sumo, beautiful, awesome. absolutely beautiful stuff. The one poster came, no problem. It was damaged though, so I said, "Oh, it's damaged." And they said, "No problem. We'll send you a new one." Send mm-hmm. me a new one. I had got to pay it. eighteen pounds. <laughs> fucking exactly. import duty on it's it it's crazy man and i'm like what well, for what and they said oh because it's import i said but it's a, it's a poster it's the same thing i had it like the other week so i emailed them and i said they i've got to pay another 18 pounds they said oh we, we refund it no problem bang so half sumo fantastic oh story. wow good for them so, but yeah they refund it i'm because telling you- apparently the sender needs to write a certain thing down for it not to pay these oh, tariffs or something so if they don't write if they don't put the dot in exactly the right place you're paying folks i we do not get any kind of sponsorship and anything from half sumo but i'm telling you they are legit they're out of new york i believe Some lovely stuff yeah amazing amazing stuff amazing designs not just like posters t-shirts um well they do a lot of rash, gar- rash guards i actually get, I got a bgj gi from them incredible stuff man incredible like it just really cool attention to detail one that i didn't even understand like that pavel told me about like the inside is uh, this dogi it has it's based on uh, musashi and stuff and it has this beautiful japanese artwork and yeah. um, i don't want to butcher the story now because pavel told me about where, the history of where it came from that basically peasants weren't allowed to wear nice things so they had to hide them underneath and that's where they On got the the, like little details like that you, you see cool. a lot of geese now a lot of geese when you open the gi out and it's, it's got a whole collage on yeah, the inside of a amazing. story or something yeah it's beautiful beautiful stuff very All nice right. let's wrap uh, it up wind this bitch up subscribe like share tell us how much you hate us we want to know <laughs> tell us like, all at least the terry tell, tell terry us. Well, no one hates Scott. Scott's the nice guy. I missed it. I missed the nasty. Remember, if you're not punching in the face and throwing and grabbing, you're not even fucking doing kyokushin. You go and train with fucking Luis Cabaralido. That's where you belong. (laughs) (laughs) Shut.